we want to create autonomous vehicles that are intelligent enough to drive us around. We don't see autonomy as a binary value, either you have it or not, but as a continuum of capabilities that vehicles might possess. I will present a generally accepted classification called the levels of automation, from level 0 to level 5, which means completely autonomous. Because it was created by automotive engineers, they used the word automation, but roboticists like to use the word autonomy here. This graphic shows the description of the levels of autonomy. Let's start with level 5. Level 5 corresponds to a completely autonomous car. These cars don't exist today. A level 5 car is a car that you can call and it will show up at your door. It will ask you where you want to go and it will get you there, while you relax and play with dog in the back. Think of a taxi but without a taxi driver, and completely missing the pedals or the steering wheel. Let's get back to Earth and see what exists today. In level 0 cars, the human fully controls the car, in the sense of steering and acceleration at all normal times. There can still be some electronic mediation between the user's commands and the car's operators in case of emergency. Since the 90s, there have been electronic systems such as ABS, anti-lock braking system, and ESC, electronic stability control, as well as many other variations on those ideas. You have felt them if you have ever driven on a wet surface, on snow, and eyes, and something happened, and you slammed on the brakes and heard some weird vibrations, and eventually you came to a safe stop. Without those systems, the car would have spun out of control. More recently, level zero features include the generation safety warnings, such as a parking warning or a lane departure warning. These features require the system to be aware of the environment, so they need cameras or distance sensors. However, the system does not act. The warning tells the driver that something is concerning, and it is the driver that must rectify the situation. In level 1 cars, the human shares control of the vehicle. The human is still required to maintain eyes on the road and hands on the steering wheel, but some control is automated. An example is a feature like automatic cruise control, which keeps the velocity constant or the distance to the next vehicle constant, while the human controls the steering. These systems help reduce driver fatigue in traffic or on long stretches of highway. Another example is a parking assistance system, in which the car steers, but the human controls the speed of the vehicle. In level 2 cars, the machine can take full control of the vehicle, for both steering and acceleration. These cars already exist. Level 2 cars can drive along a lane by themselves. They may still require confirmation from the user in some cases, for example, when to initiate a lane change. At level 2, there are two drivers, a human driver and a machine driver, and they alternate. The human must be able and ready to take back control at any time. In level 3 cars, the human will be supposedly allowed to direct attention away from the driving task. In a level 3 car, you will be able to watch a movie on your phone, but you will still have to sit in the driver's seat and be ready to take over when the system requires you to do it. Whether safe level 3 systems are possible is still an open question. The problem here is that presumably, when the car would ask you to take back control, you would have to react very quickly, and you can imagine it would take you a few seconds just to stop watching the movie and try to get your bearings and assess the situation. Level 3 seemed a good idea at the beginning. It seemed a small, feasible, incremental step from level 2. However, people have realized that it may be more difficult to create level 3 cars than the higher levels of autonomy. In levels 4 and 5, the car is completely autonomous. There is only one driver, which is the machine. You sit in the back and the car gets you to the destination. The difference between level 4 and 5 is just the scope. Level 5 means that the car can operate anywhere, on any road, on any condition. So the steering wheel is completely useless. Level 4 means that the car is able to be autonomous only in a smaller operating domain. Level 4 is feasible depending on the scope. An autonomous taxi company can choose where and when to operate. It can choose to deploy in sunny weather rather than snowy weather. There are already several examples of companies deploying an autonomous taxi service in a limited area. It is now a question of progressively enlarging the scope. Level 5 is the North Star for the field. It gives us the direction, although we may never reach it. As of today, Level 5 autonomy does not appear to be inconceivable, although it is hard to speculate on a timeline. The more we understand about these problems, the more optimistic we are about getting there, 
eventually. But the timeline seems to expand as we learn of the engineering challenges that we need to solve. To summarize, we have seen the definition of the levels of autonomy. Although they are numbered 0 to 5, and in the past we went incrementally from 0 to 1 to 2, there is a discontinuity at level 3. Most of the industry players are starting directly at level 4, skipping level 3. 